this is why I did this. I can walk the entire zoo without cane. I have to carry around a couple of things like socks and water bottles and whatever, normal things that you would have to carry around. But the only amputee thing that I have to carry around is extra socks. And this is so exciting. I finally get to take part in my kids' lives. So if you are thinking about going on this journey and wondering if your life will be better, my life has. I don't know if yours will, but my life has gotten better. The major thing I have gained since cutting my left leg off almost two years ago is mobility. I'm able to live my daily life without pain, which is such a luxury that I have not had in over 10 years. I couldn't even walk around my own home without pain, let alone working as a hairstylist or going on a school field trip. Now I can freely go without having to pay for it the next week, stuck on the couch in terrible pain. Even bigger than mobility is playing. I have always sat on the park bench or in the sand since I was not able to walk very far. Now I can freely say yes to my kids when they ask me to play with them. I can't believe I can do stuff like this. This is exactly why I cut my foot off. This is so exciting. Now I can come up to the top with my kids and see the things, see the things that they see, enjoy the things that they enjoy, spend time with them. It's a hard decision, but totally worth it. Another huge win is to be able to do cardio exercise. I've not been able to do that in 10 years. Now I can run, bike, hike, work out in the gym without pain. Now it's just finding the time to do it. One of the biggest positive changes is that I don't have depression from living in chronic pain and missing out on life. The pain that I felt in my heart at night far outweighed the pain in my foot. I feel like I have been set free. The main challenge I face now is volume fluctuation. When I sit to drive or eat, my residual limb swells, cutting off the circulation from my tight socket. But then when I walk, I lose volume and become end bearing, which is so painful that I can't walk at all. I have to address it immediately. I add and remove socks with my volume fluctuation, which isn't terrible, except I have to carry around socks no matter where I go. Date night, church, errands, school plays, you name it, I always have socks on me. There are different sockets that allow for volume change, like vacuum pump is one, but I was told that I wasn't a candidate. Boa is another, but the strings have a tendency to break, and when that happens, you have to make an appointment and visit the prosthetist. I don't have the time to deal with that, and I also don't have insurance right now, and I cannot afford that living in the United States. A modular adjustable socket is currently in the development stage and will make amputees' lives so much easier, but until it gets here, I'm stuck with the socks. Another challenge I have is my body temperature. I cannot figure out why I can't control my own body temperature anymore. If I get cold, I have to be very careful. I can't get warm. I have to stop what I'm doing and make some major changes in order to warm up again. Same goes for being hot. If I get too hot, I have to stop what I'm doing because there doesn't seem to be a gauge or a stopping place for my body temperature. I used to be able to tough it out, but now I will literally have a heat stroke. We made it to the end of the zoo, and now I have cranky kids. I could make it back, but that one can't. So we're gonna get on the tram. Come here, you. So apparently they can't make it up the hill to the back to the front without a tram ride, but they can play tag. Right. <laughs> Gotcha. Being an amputee has taught me so many things. One of the biggest is not to judge. I get judged all the time. I'm viewed as weak because of my disability. I've been talked down to because of my disability. I get nasty looks when I park in a handicapped space because I quote, walk just fine. But I've also been told I'm an inspiration, which is actually the only reason that I do these videos. I hope to be an inspiration to other people that if I can do it, you can too. Another thing this journey has taught me is that life isn't always what you had in mind. This is nowhere close to where I saw myself being 10 years ago. But life is actually made up of choices to either keep going and make the best of it or give up and just wait to die. I have also learned how to give myself grace. Grace to fail, grace to learn, grace to rest. This is not something I've ever practiced in my 40 years on this earth. One of my biggest passions and the thing I missed out on most was travel. 
Now we have the opportunity to travel anywhere in the world we want to go as soon as our online money streams take off. We hope to move to Europe before the end of the year. This is an ambitious goal, but doable. Since we can work from anywhere and our kids are homeschooled, we will spend the majority of our time traveling between countries and making everlasting memories with our kids. But my biggest goal in life is raising warriors. This life is rough and I am fully devoted to training our children how to live their very best life. And that is completely up to them to determine but I will not spare any opportunity from them that is within my grasp. We just got to the car, but before we take off, it's an hour and a half drive, and I need to take off my leg because it swells during the trip, and then I'm fighting with it while trying to drive. This is another reason that I really need the modular socket, which I've been talking about and a developer is making for me. Well, he's making it, and he chose me to model it and to try it out. So anyway, which is at my house to try, but it's still a prototype. So more of that to come, but I'm, for now I had to take my leg off to drive home.